Hi all, today there will be a continuation on the DK-1203 chip. In the surveillance video, we each time made a 12-volt power supply on it. I then took the scheme from the datasheet and did not change anything in it. Today I will make another power supply on this chip. I made a board for it using laser cardboard technologies. The output of the power supply will be 6 volts. I will also explain what details need to be changed in the circuit to get the desired voltage. Here is the 12 volt power supply I built in the previous video. And this is another only 6 volts. To change the output voltage of the power supply, we just need to rewind the secondary winding of the transformer and change a couple of parts. For the power supply, I made the wiring in the layout program. I printed it out on a printer, pasted it on a cardboard and got a board. I made holes with a needle, inserted the parts there and connected them with jumpers. A link to the project with the layout of the board will be in the description. 12 watt power supply. The output is 6 volts with a current of 2 amperes. The differences from the previous 12 volt power supply are small. The capacitors here I set to 1000 microfarads and 6.3 volts. I took them from the motherboard of an old computer. They have low internal resistance. Diode D6, supplied with marking 20,100 CT. This is a dual Schottky diode for 20 amps 100 volts. The assembly is made in the TO220 package. If necessary, you can put a radiator. To get 6 volts at the output of the power supply, it was necessary to put a 5 volt Zener diode. It wasn't in my inventory, and so instead of it, I put two series connected LEDs. In total, they stabilize the voltage of 5 volts. 5 mm blue LEDs. This is how nice it looks. In principle, the signal LED can be removed. Resistor R3 I also replaced. Instead of 1 kilo ohm, I put 270 ohms. Now let's talk about the transformer. I did not divide the primary winding into two parts as in the previous power supply, and I wound the secondary winding directly on the primary winding. The core I used is exactly the same size as in the previous power supply. Only I did not grind the middle leg of the core to obtain the necessary clearance. Instead I took two identical halves. I took two pieces of a four size paper and put between the halves. The inductance turned out to be about 960 micro Henry. I wound the secondary winding with a double wire making eight turns. Core diameter 0.4 millimeters. I will explain how to rewind the transformer to the voltage you need. We leave the primary winding unchanged. It will also have 120 turns. And we make the secondary winding in such a way that 1.4 turns must be made for 1 volt. Simply put, we multiply 1.41 by the required voltage and get the number of turns of the secondary winding. For example, if you need to get 5 volts, multiply 1.41 and get 7 turns. If you need 12 volts, then multiply 1.41 by 12. It turns out 17 turns. And if you need 24 volts at the output of the power supply, then we get 34 turns. In order for the voltage at the output of the power supply to change, it is not enough just to rewind the secondary winding. You also need to change the Zener diode in the feedback circuit. I'll give you an example of how to choose it. Let's say the output of the power supply is 6 volts. The optocoupler always drops 1.1 volts. To get 6 volts, you need to put a 5 volt Zener diode. A negligible voltage drops across the resistor, which can be neglected. To get 12 volts at the output of the power supply, we take an 11 volt Zener diode. And to get 24 volts, we take a 23 volt Zener diode. 
please note that no matter what voltage you make at the output of the power supply, its power will always be limited to 18 watts. My 6 volt power supply easily puts out 2 amps. This is sufficient for my needs. If you like the video, click on the like, click on the bell, subscribe to the channel. If you have not subscribed yet, ask questions if something was not clear to you. Well, that's it. All for now.